sounds like college. <laughs> it sounds like college. <laughs> so, and then if you if you know, go ahead and go ahead and tell. Me. Uh, it sounds like college. Ethnomusicology. Omar, what do you think it is? Um, like someone who knows about like different music from around the world. That is correct. So, an ethnomusicologist is somebody who goes to different cultures around the world uh, and studies their particular music. I know music. So, we're uh, I know like we're we're all from different places in the world, right? Even if it's even if it's all in different places in America, we all have different types of music that we listen to, right? Um, I know. Um, Omar, where is your, um, where are your family from? Um, Nicaragua. Nicaragua, right. And I know uh, Ta Takeshi, there, you guys are from Japan. Um, and I And then my, my family, my, my, my ancestors uh, are from Scotland. So I play the bagpipes because my, my family is from Scotland. So that's one of our our cultural instruments. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. It's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, so I have a I, I have a, a few Not random really ones I play for that reason. But uh, one of the places that I went uh, when I was studying ethnomusicology was I went to South America and I went to um, specifically Ecuador. Um, and I got to study some different music from the area. And that whole area is built in the what's called the, the Andes Mountains. And so they have their own type of music and a lot of um a lot of different instruments that are specific to that place that are used in other places and in other types of music now, but they originated in that area. So I'm gonna show you guys a few things and I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and play a few instruments as well. So let's see. If I share this right here with you guys. Can everyone see this? Yeah. Cool. Okay. We were talking about a little bit of instruments going around the world. And so an ethnomusicologist, you said it's an it's someone who studies instruments and music from around the world. And most ethnomusicologists, they, they devote themselves to one particular area, one or two places like in the world that they study so they can get to know it really, really well. Um, and I came home, so I didn't get to continue doing that. Uh, okay. But we have we talked a little bit about um, percussion instruments and um, string instruments and wind instruments in, the, in our in our orchestra, but we have the same categories of music. All right, I can't. So. All right, I can. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody now. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna mute everybody now. Yes, Rico, what was your question? I have a question. So, yeah. the, the, I think the second slide, no, the third slide you showed, no, with the man who was sitting on the couch playing that, those flutes, was that the thing you're talking about you play? No, it's not. This is a South American uh, instrument. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you guys about that, but we're gonna do percussion first, okay? Okay. So I'm just muting everybody so that we can all, uh, we can all hear. Okay. So the first one we're going to talk about here is percussion instruments. So percussion instruments are like when you guys think of, of drums, like what are the, the drums and the shakers that we use? So some of the things that we use um, in South America, particularly in the Andes region, are is a, a cajon, bongos, congas, claves, and maracas. So over here, let me show. You. I'm going to move my pictures around so you can see it. These are congas. They're much bigger than the bongos. So these are the bongos, and they have. Uh, these have a higher pitch and these have a lower pitch and they're often used together. And then let's see, these are called claves and I'm actually going to show you those and let you listen to that as well. 
And these are maracas. So I'm going to stop my share of this. I'm going to show you my physical instruments in my room. Here. Okay. So these are my maracas right here. They have... Um, these are my these maracas are from Ecuador. And I brought them back with me, and they have a nice little design around them. And they're hand carved and painted. And inside, it's just it's just wood with beads inside of them. So some of it is rice and beans and different things that help make it give that sound. So so those are our maracas. These are, yes, Miss Abriana. I have, I have maracas from Central America. Do you know what place in Central America? Nicaragua. Nicaragua, nice. Um, I, love, I love maracas because um, they're very accessible and easy to play. Okay, so these are the claves. Claves, you hold one like this. With our, with our left hand, and then your right hand. That helps keep the beat, and also, sometimes, instead of using claves, we use our hands. And they help give, give accents, and they help um, impact the music a little bit more. So... I love that all you guys have have um, have maracas. Maracas are awesome. I also this is one of my one of my favorite um, percussion instruments is the claves because it's kind of high pitched and you can hear hear it over some of the other music. Yes, uh, Brianna. Whoops. They look like loaves of bread. They look like loaves of bread. They look to me. They look kind of like um, just little little sticks of wood. Actually, sometimes, um, sometimes they do just use sticks of wood, but inside they're kind of hollow. So that way, that that pitch, that what you hear, is like going cutting through the other music. Okay, so here is oops, another hand percussion instrument that was not on the slide. Does anyone know what this is? Or what it's called? Eva, what's this called? Zero. A gyro. Sounds kind of like a frog. So it's got all these pieces here that are um, indented so that you get that sound. I like gyros, they're cool. All right, and we were also talking, now those are the, the percussion instruments you play with your, with your hands up in the air. Yes, Rico? I thought thing I thought the heroes who just play for caught are do, are they another word for fish? Are they like a fish? Well, that one's kind of um kind of uh looks kind of like a fish. <laughs> it's got a small end and a larger end. But the reason the reason for that is this when you click on this piece, this part is smaller and this part is bigger. So you get a, a high or a hot lower pitch and a higher pitch right here. That's why we have it like that. So this, all right. So this one right here. Sometimes I just use this as a, as a chair, <laughs> but this is my cajon, and in a, a, co a cajon is basically a box. It is a box drum, and inside of it. It's got a little hole on, on the back so the sound can come out. And inside of it are snares that are at the front which help give you different sounds like. So you have a low pitch and a higher pitch. And when you're playing this, and I'm gonna back my chair up and hope I don't fall this time. <laughs> um, and I'll answer your question in just a second. I'm gonna, sh um, Move this down here, and when you can see that, I hope nobody, nothing falls. You sit on it like this, and then the bottom, your your whatever hand is more dominant will go. Uh, you use the palm of your hand, and then you slap with the 
this part of your hand up here. So you can move. So it's almost, it can basically replace a, a, uh, a drum set, which is kind of fun. Yes, uh, Brianna? Um, in my church, when we do, like, when we sing songs, we, um, one, one of the, somebody used that instrument. They always sit on it and do that. Yep. I, I take it with me a lot of places when I can't take my entire drum set. Like, like right now, I'm, uh, I'm in my room here and, um, I'm teaching drum lessons and I don't have my drum set here because my drum set is at my house with my family in Alabama. So to teach different rhythms, I'm using I'm using this. And I'm also talking a lot about uh, hand percussion, which is cool. This right here looks, uh, well, you may not have seen this before. This is a way to replace bongos. I don't have my actual set of bongos, but this is called a bongo cajon. So the cajon is the box drum. These are box bongos. So inside, you have a smaller section, the higher pitch section, and then a bigger section here, which is the lower pitch section right here. Yes. And yes, thank, thank you, Omar. <laughs> I, did, I did not say that. <laughs> yes. It, uh, cajon means big box. Um, and so when you play this one over here, you can put it on your lap or between your, or between your legs here and play it just just like you would play bongos with the tips of your fingers. So if I put it down here in between my legs and I move, well, it's kind of hard with cameras. Okay. <laughs> and I put it right here. So you use, that's all stuff that you play drums with your hands. Or your arms. Okay, so that was that. That's all the percussion instruments I have um, for the, for South America. But then, thank you, Abriana. Um, then I'll go back to my to my slide here. And so we did our maracas. We did the cajon. That's how it's spelt. The big drum the box drum, um, the bongos, which these are real bongos right here, and these are congas, and then the claves. All right, so after percussion, we have strings. So, um, Omar, how many, how many instruments do you know about for the string instruments? Have you ever seen a quattro? It's more it's more used in um, in Venezuela, and um, there's a Puerto Rican one as well, but that's that's not South America. Venezuela is. Um, but so there's a few different instruments here that are really really popular. We have the guitar, and it's the classical guitar, um, and then we have a quattro. This is a quattro right here. I'm sorry, that's a triangle. This is the quattro. It only has four strings, and it's tuned kind of like a um, it's tuned kind of like a ukulele, but it um, can play a lot more um, it, because it's a lot bigger. And then we have the charango, this one right here, which has ten strings, and it plays a lot of melodies. Like if you were to, you know how sometimes your right hand on the piano um, plays the melody or you're playing violin, you play the melody a lot. Um, the charango plays the melody a lot. And then we have the guitaron, which is the big guitar, which looks like this. And so it's really, really big. It comes out like this so that it can, it can vibrate. The strings can vibrate longer and lower. And it's basically like a classical bass guitar, or if you had an upright bass, but you could hold it. I used to play this instrument when I, I was in a uh, an Andean band, and uh, I used to play this instrument. It was my favorite thing to play, but I don't have one of those because they're really, really big. <laughs> but what I do have 
is, well first, the guitar, all right, and how many strings did a guitar have? Let's see, Ms. Sophia, how many strings does a guitar have? Four. Not four. Uh, let's see, oh, here we go, you know. All right, Eva knows. How many strings does a guitar have, Eva? Six. Six, yep. So a guitar has six strings. And I have a guitar. One too. in particular has, um, is a classical guitar. And who knows what the difference between a classical guitar and an acoustic guitar is? Rico, what do you think? The sound? It, it does have to do with the sound, but it also has a lot to do with the strings. So I believe what uh, what Abriana just pull, pulled up was an acoustic guitar. So this is, yes, Omar, do you know? Um, Maybe that the acoustic, that the acoustic doesn't have brass strings, but sometimes the... You're, you're very, you're right on, you're right on that. So an acoustic guitar, and it's, it'd be hard to see in, in here, but an acoustic guitar has all metal strings where the classical guitar, and typically the back comes back like this, um, the classical guitar has nylon strings. So it's actually a lot softer on your hands and you can play things. So it sounds on the classical, I don't like, to, I don't like to play without a strap because it always slides off me. I don't usually play the classical. <laughs> but that, this is my classical, so that when you see the acoustic, it looks more like... acoustic guitar has that part up here going out right here where the classical has the strings going back and these are all metal strings where these are nylon strings right here and that's that's just hard to see over over the um over the thing but so when you're playing um you can hear a little bit of difference in in it. My strap does not want to stay on, but you can hear a little bit of difference in the quality of sound based on the type of instrument that you're playing. So that's some classical sounds there, but on an acoustic guitar. And the other one I have is the charango, which was the very small one. And typically, mine's made out of wood, but the original ones were made out of armadillo shells. So the animal um, the, that had the really hard shell, um, they would take their shells and actually hollow them out and put a piece of wood inside of it and then add these strings right here. And those strings um, were also nylon strings, just like the classical guitar. So it has a very light sound, but the, so each, each string here um, has, a, has two strings. You see that? So there's two and then two, 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 and two. These are the, all the same tuned to the same note. So up here, these are both E's and these are both A's. And the, the one in the middle is a high E and a low E. So they're an octave apart or eight notes apart. And then we have a C and a G. And sometimes there you play um, Sometimes you play chords. And 
sometimes they play melodies. Like... But that's definitely not my main my main instrument right there. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Brianna. Um, why does it have to be two strings together? That is because when you play two strings together, it has a different, the strings vibrate kind of together. Um, have you ever seen a 12 string guitar? So there's a, our typical guitar has six strings, but there's, they also make a 12 string guitar. And so when you play that one note, it actually helps it, um, it's a little bit louder and it helps the, um, the sound like be more full. So it's like, um, it's like, uh, in, in terms of violin, it'd be like if you put, if you put your bow, um, a little bit more into the note and it makes it a sound more full and bigger. Um, that's what this does when you have two strings together, helps it sound bigger. Um, so there's my charango. So those are some string instruments and one of the, the other category that we're missing is the wind instruments. So let me share my screen again for some wind instruments. Okay, so in the wind instruments, there are, there are three main things that get used um, in South America. Um, the main one um, that we all use is our voice, because we love to sing and, and use our voices. But the other instruments that are used is the cana, which is the flute right here. So this is a wooden flute um, that is it's played by air. Your air is blowing across the top right here, and then your fingers are down here. Um, it's a very beautiful instrument. And then you guys were asking earlier about this one right here. This is a siku, or a pan flute. Um, they, they go straight across, and they blow kind of across the holes up top. And actually, um, some fun background on, on the siku. Um, the siku was made by, um, wait, Rico, what are you, what are you saying? Oh, I was just liking how, I just like how this, this man is blowing in the flute. It just looks so, it looks like there's different sounds, like he can go all around it and still make a perfect sound. Like, I feel like the long ones are the, are the low pitch and the high ones are the high pitch. It is. So, yes, Abriana? Um, My cousin's grandpa, he has, he has um, one of those, but it doesn't have very long ones. It just has short ones. Yep, and you know why that is? I'm going to tell you. So the, the big one is what the original instrument was, the really, really big one. But one of the reasons that they used the siku um, was that when women would go up on the mountains to go um, collecting different herbs and, um, and plants and whatnot, um, they would come down together and sometimes they couldn't see each other. So to make sure that they were all safe, they would continuously play the siku as they walked down the mountain. And what happened was the original instrument was really, really big. <laughs> so um, because it's so big and, um, and the women were also trying to carry all of the plants and the herbs and stuff, they couldn't carry the giant siku, so they split it in half. So there was a lower side and a higher side, and they're called the era and the arca. So, which basically is the male and the female. So the higher sounds and the lower sounds, or you could, or you could call it the um, your, your treble and your bass. And they split it so they would actually work together to play melodies, going back and forth between the two panpipes, or between the two sikus, um, which is very very fun. Yes, Abriana. That. That's cool. The story you said, like how they um say that, use that because they can't see each other. Yeah, a lot of um a lot of instruments came um in 
in all kinds of different, different areas of the world, a lot of instruments came from people going out and hunting or, or hunting and gathering and to make sure that they were safe um, and they would make music. And then when they all came together, they would make music together. So this is my, my set of uh, pan pipes or my pan flute. Um, so mine's a little bit different than, than those, but I, I got it in, um, I got this in Ecuador. Um, but it has these holes right here where you blow across the top and that's how we get the sound. And, and you're right, the longer one has the lower sound and the higher ones ah, mine's not very good. But uh, the higher ones get the, get the smaller sounds or the higher pitch sounds, just like you said, Rico. Yes, Rico. I, I had something to say. So okay. I've seen that before. And it kind of I see that looks exactly like that, except they're the smaller, they're the larger because I was a little bit more smaller. Mm -hmm. like, I, I've seen that in like Togo Hardy. Yeah. I, I love I love the pan flute and this this sikus because they have some really really great sounds. So I'm gonna play. Um, so all of those instruments get used in um, different songs from the, that that area of the world. But one of my favorites is called El Condor Basa, which you may have heard before. But it's got so. Can you hear this? Thumbs up if you can hear it. So that, that one right there, that's the cana, that's the flute right there. And we have a guitarone, our bass guitar in there. And we have the, um, the regular guitar playing the chords. And then we have some different percussion instruments in there. And and at some point, you're going to hear two canas or two flutes come in together, and they start creating a duet, which is really, really cool. But that's one of my that's one of my favorite um, ones that we we got to play. So, all right. So I'm going to ask you guys, what was your favorite instrument that I shared today? Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around and ask you guys, what's your favorite instrument that you saw today from South America? I'm going to start with Rico because he's got his hand raised. I like the guitar. Like, you like I the like guitar? The, I like the, no, the, the box where you can hit different beats from low to high. Yeah, I like, I like that one. Okay, um, Omar, what's your favorite? There we go. Um, the charango. The charango. I love it. <laughs> it's small and portable, <laughs> and you can play melodies or chords. Okay, let's see. Uh, Abriana, what was your favorite? Pan, pan flute. The pan flute. Solid choice. Okay, and Eva, which one was your favorite? Um, the classic guitar. The classical guitar. I like that. All right, and let's see, Takashi, what was what was your favorite instrument that I that you saw today? If I can unmute you. Oh, it won't let me unmute you. Oh, there we go. Guitar. The guitar. What about your brother? <laughs> what did you like? Mm -hmm. Ah, you like the guitar as well. Awesome. Okay, and Sophia. Uh, the pan flute. The pan flute. Cool. So that is a little a little background on the uh, on the South American or the Andes region. And if we were to do this again, maybe next week, what area of the world would you guys want to learn about? All right. Sophia, raise her hand first. What did you say? Asia. Asia. Okay. And Rico. I want to learn about New York. New York. New York's got everything because all the different cultures came in together. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely get on some of that. Okay, Omar, what do you think? 
Um, Central America. Central America. Okay. And let's see, Eva. Congo. Congo. Okay. And Adriana, what do you think? Um, Central America too. Central America. Okay. And Takashi, where would you want to learn about? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rico. Central America also. Central America. Okay. Anyone else? Any other places that you want to learn about? All right. Well, thank you guys for participating today. That was really, really fun. I love getting to share my random musical knowledge with you guys and my instruments because my instruments are my friends. <laughs> and so are you guys. I love seeing all of your beautiful faces. So, who's going to do that 30 days practice? I'm doing it. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Well, you guys have a good one, and I will see you all later. <laughs>